Manipulating a loved one is bad, but manipulating redstone signals is good. That's exactly what we're going to be learning how to do today. Manipulating redstone signals from extending to shortening them to multiplying and dividing them. So whether you're building an advanced machine like the one behind me or a simple redstone door, it's very important to understand how to manipulate redstone signals. Welcome back to the series, by the way. This is episode three, redstone signal manipul changer manipulation changer circuits or something like that. All right, to get started, let's talk about how we can change our redstone signals. So there's four predominant ways that we can change our signals. We can subtract from the length. We can add to the length. We can multiply the number of signals that we're getting to the output. And we can also divide so we get multiple inputs for one output. So these are the four basic ways we're going to manipulate our redstone signals. Let's dive right in with the first one, subtraction. So we're taking a long redstone signal and making it a short one. So here we are, push the lever. This is still going, even though our output has long since turned off, we have our pulse shortener. And that's what this does. It makes a long pulse and turns it into a short one. Essentially, the way that this design works, which is very common to see in big redstone machines, the way that this works is this redstone dust will send the signal through the gravel into the repeater and that sends it out to our output. But this redstone dust also powers this piston which moves the block out of the way. So the signal is only able to travel through the block for a short second before it's moved out of the way. In a similar idea, we have the observer design. Instead of using a moving block, we just are using an observer. For every time the observer moves, it sends an output. So we can see that no matter how long our input is, it will only output a short time. And then finally on the list of subtraction, we have our item mover. So essentially this item is temporarily moving from this dropper to this hopper and then moving straight back because that's how the hopper is pointed. And while it's here, this comparator will read that and say, hey, there's an item in this container and send the signal out to our output. So as you can see, no matter how long, again, no matter how long our input is, our output will always be shorter. It will always be a very consistent output. So these three designs are very handy if you want to take a long signal and make it shorter. But what if you want to take a short signal and make it longer? Well, that's where these designs come in. So let's start back here. The very classic, iconic pulse extender. So if I push this button, this signal will go around here into this comparator line. So the signal is going up this way, turning around and going back down this way. Now when it jumps from here to here, that is the only time in the whole loop that it loses a signal strength. So it takes all of this time to go all the way around and it's the exact same signal strength as it was when it started. Only when it jumps from here to here, just like I said, it loses a signal strength. So if we watch these numbers here, you can see them slowly ticking down and for the entire time that they're ticking down we're taking an output so that's how comparator pulse extenders work we can logically take this to its extreme and line up a bunch of comparators in a row and make it even longer as you can see it's much longer between loops and we're taking an output the whole time that's going around one thing to note about these designs is if you put an input that's too short, the signal won't be able to reach all the way around and it'll actually end up becoming a pulse multiplier as opposed to a pulse extender. So as you can see, when you push the stone button, the stone button doesn't last long enough for the signal to reach all the way around. So we're getting a bunch of outputs for our one input, which is not what we want in this situation. Sometimes it is, but not in this situation. So we want to make sure that the signal can reach all the way around before we turn it off again. That's one thing to know about these designs. All right, so finally on the list, we have our completely customizable pulse extender. When I push this button, this item in here will move from here to here. This comparator will say, hey, there's an item in here. Power this piston, moving this block from here to here, powering this hopper, depowering this hopper. These items will start to move from this hopper to this hopper. This comparator will say, hey, there's items in here now, sending the signal out to, the, to their output. When the items have finished moving from here to here, this comparator will turn off, depowering, sorry, powering this redstone torch, moving the item that was here back into its original position. 
I did a super fast run through, but let's test it out and see how it works. So, and that's it all done. So I ran through it really fast in the explanation, but that's because it all happens super quickly. <laughs> so this item is now moved from here to here when I push the button. These items are now moving back because it happened so fast, fast. Maybe let's add some more items in there so we have some time to talk about what's going on. Okay, when I push this button, this item is going to move over here, just like that. It's there. These items are now moving from this hopper to this hopper. All the while, this comparator is sending in signal to our output. When this finishes, this comparator will turn off, powering this, yep, there it just happened, powering this torch, sending this item back into its original position, and emptying the items from this hopper into this hopper. So that's a very simple design. Here's a little screenshot you can take if you want to build it. Maybe it'd be better from this side so there's not stuff in the background. There you go. Very simple, very easy, and it's also completely customizable. So for every item you put in this hopper, that is eight redstone ticks worth of time in the output. So eight tenths of a second, essentially. Okay, we've talked about addition, we talked about subtraction, now let's move on to multiplication. We're taking one input and making it more than one output. So for this very simple design, we have a button press and the button release each creates a signal on the output. So we have one input and two outputs for this one. Very easy, very simple. We have our design from earlier, our pulse extender from earlier, which will take a signal and loop it around until it dies out. But this observer is observing one of these redstone dusts, and for every time it decreases in signal strength, that observer is able to tell. So we get a multiple output for one input. All right, moving back to this one. This one's pretty easy and very useful to understand. When a comparator is in subtract mode, it will subtract its back input to its side input. So when we turn this on, this will send the signal through the comparator into the block and loop around to its side. But 15 minus 15 will be zero. So it will turn off and then loop around and back to the side. But when it's off, it will send this, it will say, hey, you know, 15 minus zero from the side is 15. So we'll send the signal back and around and around it goes. So as you can see, we have our pink output there for every time it loops around. And we can customize this pattern and speed with the timing of the repeater. But if you want it to be super fast, you could just replace it with a redstone dust. This is a very common mechanic, so it's useful to keep in mind. All right, another very simple design. We have an item that will be moving back and forth between these hoppers. And whenever it's in this hopper, this comparator will read that and give it output accordingly. Very simple, very easy. I use this one a ton in my redstone machines. Okay, one that's a little less common, but very useful because its outputs are customizable very easily by just moving items into this dropper. So right now we have the output set to eight pulses on the output. Let's push our input button and we can see two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, this is it from the overhead. If you wanna build it, feel free to pause. Two things to note about this is that this comparator is set to subtract mode and this repeater is set to three ticks delay. There is one item in this dropper and as many outputs as you want into this dropper here. So if you want eight outputs, put eight items. If you want 24, put 24 items and so on. Running briefly through how this works, it's all about this loop that we went over over there. So this is going around and around, but each time it's going around, it's powering this dropper. And whenever this dropper runs out of items, this comparator turns off and sends this item that was that got moved here when we push the button back into its original position in this dropper. And then that turns off the looping. And this part over here it just keeps the items in this hopper for as long as the system is running. Otherwise, They'll just move back and forth indefinitely. All right, we talked about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and now on to division, taking multiple inputs for one output. In this simple design, we have a loop of hoppers going around and one item being passed between them all. For every push of this button, we get a brief depowering of all the redstone above it, which allows the item to move one hopper at a time around the circle until it reaches our 
comparator hopper right now. It's located right here, and that will send a signal output accordingly. And of course, if you want this to be a pulse and not a sustained output, you can always use one of our, our subtraction circuits from earlier. That could always work here. Next on the list is this simple design where we are moving our specified number of inputs over to this hopper. When this dropper is empty, this comparator will turn off, allowing this item to move from here to here. And that signal will go one to our output and two back into the system to reset the, this latch right here. So let's just demonstrate that real quick. We have one, two, three, and four inputs. You see our out output turned on, that redstone torch turned off, allowing these items that we moved with every input to go back into the dropper. So that's a simple design. There it is from the overhead. So you can pause the video and build it if you want. Another design that we could use is this one. This one's unique because it gives a certain number of pulses for every output. So instead of having a sustained pulse output, we can have a pulsing output. So for example, we have three inputs. One, two, keep your eye on this repeater over there. One, two, three, we got, as you can see, we got a bunch of outputs. So it's a, very similar to this design we're moving items back and forth between these two droppers. This unstackable item moves when we reach the threshold from this to here, and that starts this super quick loop like we learned about in our previous module. And for every loop that we are doing, that's resetting our counter and also sending a signal to our output. So that's how that works, put simply. All right, that should cover enough circuits from addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That should cover all of our bases in that, but there is a couple things to note about these, a couple caveats to know about these types of circuits, and that is edge detections. Essentially, a signal has two edges, the rising edge and the falling edge. Certain circuits detect rising edges and certain other circuits detect falling edges. For example, one of the first ones we went over in this video is a rising edge detector. So it only detects the signal at the very beginning of the signal and not any time else. This one, on the other hand, is a falling edge detector. It will only detect the signal when the signal is over at the very end, in other words. So rising edge and falling edge. Sometimes you need to pay attention to these kinds of details when you're dealing with timing and other such things in your redstone machines. I decided to put one bonus circuit in this video. It didn't really fit in any of the other videos, so I decided to put it in here. This is the pulse length detector. Essentially, the output will only output when a certain duration of input is reached. So in this case, the wood button is long enough to give an output, but the stone button is too short. So basically, the signal is traveling to the piston powering it, and as soon as the button turns off, the piston retracts but the signal also goes around these repeaters and that will power the lamp if it reaches around while the block is still there. I can't really think of a use case for this, but it's fun to know. So that should do it for the redstone signal manipulation section of our series. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more of these kinds of videos in the future, consider subscribing to the channel because that'll tell YouTube to put those kinds of videos in your feed. And a bonus is it encourages me to make more videos just like this one. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.